Hello and welcome to our training video on PQ SCADA Sapphire. Um, this is our third video and it is how to do an investigation. Now doing an investigation is a very in-depth process and we could do several videos on this and we will end up doing several videos to help through some of the more complex settings. Um, what we're going to do though today is to go step by step to show you how we're going to um, bring data in, do a basic analysis on it, and what to do with it afterwards. Um, there are a lot of quick tip videos out there that have some more in-depth parts um, that I encourage you to definitely watch. Um, and of course you're also welcome to call us at any time if you need immediate assistance. So in our last video we went over on your system tab how to set up your data, bring in your meters, bring in data to your system and your database. So today we're going to look at that data. We're going to go to our investigation tab. And there are multiple ways to start the investigation. Um, this is usually the quickest, just start new investigation. You can also just drag files and drop it in here if you want to um, for something really quick as well. But we're going to go start new investigation and we're going to give it a unique name. And it's going to be training one. And then this is how you are going to be bringing your data in. Component, which is an attached meter. File or folder would be if you have data on a USB drive or you've got it stored on your hard drive somewhere on your PC. An FTP folder is if you're FTP'd into a remote meter and you're pulling data in that way or a remote server or a remote database. Um, so it just depends on, on how you're doing it. So we're going to go with component. And then here is all of our components. We're going to select a G5 that is located in our lab. And then on this page you select your time interval. You can select a custom interval and choose from month, day, year, hour, minute, second to something else or you can use a pre-chosen predefined um, selection I want to go last hour and then we have our options of where we want to take the data from here um, usually you're going to go with a trend that that allows you to see your plot lines of your data give you an idea of what's going on over time during your investigation um, the rest of these we're going to go into as well in different videos um, to explain how, why, and when you would possibly use some of these. Um, obviously you can use them whenever you want to, if depending on what you're looking on. Um, phaser, scatter, parameter, scatter events, statistics, um, events, graphs, spectrums for your harmonics, a cyclic histogram, an overall summary, and then we're also going to cover a template briefly. So you know, don't be overwhelmed. Just take it one piece at a time. Learn what you got to learn and go on to the next piece and keep exploring and, and learning as it goes step by step. So we're going to go with trend. So this is the parameter selection screen. If you have multiple feeders set up in your meter, um, in this case our G5 in the lab does, it's monitoring multiple buses. We're going to select main feeder. So I want to look at you know all the data here. And then we want to select the parameters we want to look at. As you can see, there is a lot of parameters to choose from. And you may not want to try and scroll around. So right here in the parameter search box, RMS. So now I can grab my three phase voltages and currents. And then we'll throw in power. Now, once I've selected everything that I want to look at right now, um, I hit finish. If I hit something that I did not want, say I didn't want to select active power, I could just click the X and remove it. So I hit finish, and that pulls me to my. Uh, view screen. 
So over here on the left hand side, this shows what data we're getting ready to look at. Our voltages, our current, our powers are all listed over here. Over here is your graphs. As you can see, we've got our, our data brought in. We've got an hour's worth of data here. Now, say I wanted to look at something, I want to look at my voltage a little bit clearer. Right here, if you hover over it, it says hide chart. So we're going to hide, not remove, but hide our currents. So now we have an hour's worth of voltage. Now let's go ahead and we'll zoom in on a piece of it. Okay. And the beauty of this is when I reselect the current, it has the same view now that um, I created on my voltage. So everything comes right back in to the same time scale. And say so I'm looking at this and go, you know, I'd really like to see what the waveform is doing at this point. So I can go actions, add new chart, trend, and then waveform. We're going to look at our voltage waveform. And now we can see there is the same little corresponding bump right here. And that allows us to zoom in. We'll go ahead and let's knock this power out of the way and the current out of the way. And see if this is actually you know, anything of concern or if it's just a little bit. And you see it's just a little bit of voltage distortion, not, not even anything to worry about. Um, but it allows you to zoom in and see what's, what you have and what you're not um, looking at. So if you want to go back to the previous view um, that I had, we can go up here. Go back a second. So we're going to add a second's time to the front and a second's time to the back. So now we have all of our data, you know, back into a second's view. Um, I'm really I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the voltage because waveform data at 1,024 samples per cycle sometimes takes a few seconds to render. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the waveform voltage. So this allows you to go through and, you know, you, you've got all your information here that you want to look at. Um, the, the main thing that you're, you're concerned with at this point is getting all your data and getting it into a format that you can export or share. So when you're done looking at your data, so let's go ahead and let's go back to our hour we'll go ahead and just add an hour to either end this time so we're looking at two hours worth of data There we go. So now we've got the data we want here. If you want to go back and forth between time frames, this will allow you to go previous time frame. So you could bounce this all around so you don't have to try and remember how far in or out did I zoom. Um, it allows you just to move back and forth pretty quickly. So we can see here, we can just keep going back to our, our different zoom ins that we did. So 
there's a couple of ways you can manipulate your your views. Um, another thing we can look at doing is uh, changing uh, the y-axis settings. So we can remove the auto settings and go say 200 to 300 steps of 10. Now without that not without the zoomed in view, we have a remotely straight with just the one little event visible right here. And then we can change that back to auto and it pulls it back to the original settings. These individual chart icons here are for the only or for the one that they're actually looking at um you can also you know pretty much do whatever you want you can change the color you can show min max values disable charts hide the legend box hide the crosshairs change the background color hide the grid lines um you can do whatever you want to make the chart look more how you wish to. Uh, you can also, if you wish to do more stuff to it, um, is export it. Where you can copy it to your clipboard, export your chart to an image file, or export the chart to Excel. And if you were to do it to Excel, you would get um, on page one a picture of the graph, and then on page two uh, all the data time stamped. So that gives people options that they want to do um, Excel or whatever they want to do with it. Um, so typically, now that you're at this point, you've you've got your, you've you've pulled your data in, you've done all your views, your everything, and you're happy with it. Um, there's a couple of things you can do. You can share the investigation, or export the investigation. We're going to export it to Word. So, we'll call it training one, save it. Now, once it's saved, we're going to take a look at it and see if it indeed is what we want. Um, so, here's you know, you've got your report, you've got your table of contents. your trend data and a table showing your min max and average values and the notes and then you put in here event nothing to worry about okay and then of course if you make changes to it obviously you would save it and at this point you've got a word document that can be sent emailed to customers shared with your coworkers. Um, or whatever you really want to do at that point. And then one final thing, if this is your starting point, you always want to start an investigation with your three-phase voltage, current, and your powers. Go to Actions, Save as Template. Template Type, this is an investigation. Okay. And then we're going to call it Training 1 and Save. Now here's the beauty of that. I'm going to start another investigation. We're going to call this Training 2. And this time, let's see. Let's pick another one. Do the last hour. Same, so we've got the same basic time frame. And we're going to select template this time instead of trend data. We're going to select the one we just chose, training one. So now we're going to see 
As you can see, here's our RMS voltage, RMS current, active power, apparent power, and reactive power, all ready to go. So it's very useful to build these templates based on what you typically like to see. So you don't have to go through and select it. You just select your template and now you've got your data in front of you with the parameters you care about and you're ready to start doing your data manipulation. Um, the, the whole purpose and the end goal of this is to streamline your process. Get the data in, get it analyzed, and export it to a Word document. Alright, so that is today's uh, training video. Thank you for watching. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and connect with us on LinkedIn. Thank you and have a great day.